From a small town to commanding a spatial is quite the journey. And we were just talking before uh, we started this that you were responsible for taking people back into space following that disaster in the 80s. Yeah, that's right. That was actually my fourth mission on the space shuttle. And, you know, I had also commanded a previous mission. So I'm happy to say that NASA trusted me and my crew to take this very important mission up. Now, we had lost seven astronauts in the Columbia accident, which was a terrible tragedy. You know, we had to go through a period of mourning, a period of accident investigation, mm -hmm. and then we switched to something called the return to flight period, get the space shuttle flying again after the accident. And that whole period took about two and a half years, of which was, it was very difficult, but you know, I like a challenge, and so I, and, and I enjoy being the commander, so I think that was one of the biggest challenges I've had, and I'm happy to look back and say that we were able to get the shuttle flying again. Yep. Why? Because the space shuttle was needed to finish building the space station, which, uh, and although the shuttle well. doesn't fly anymore, the space station is up there, and we've got seven astronauts on board right now. Just incredible stuff. I mean, people probably won't quite realize what was going on in the 80s with all these flights, the fact that we're going there, building the, the ISS, which is now right. just something that's up orbiting us now. We take it for granted, don't we? But there was a, hu there was a huge period of exploration going on. Yeah, so this, the purpose of the space station is to understand the human body in space, and we're learning so much about ourselves as humans, you know, both, I think, both physically, medically, and I would say emotionally, psychologically. Mm -hmm. We have an international crew, normally it's about seven people, sometimes it goes up to 11. And yes, Russia is still a partner, yep. the European Space Agency, the Japanese, and the Canadians. And the whole reason we have the space station is eventually we will go back to the moon. And although the US has landed on the moon, we are now going to go back and build like a space station at the south pole of the moon in preparation to take people to Mars someday. Which is just incredible to think. Give us a sense of your story, how you go from, as we say, small town America to commanding a special. Well, yeah, so my story, it, it's actually a little bit hard to believe, but I grew up in, you know, I would say lower middle class uh, family in a small town. I got interested in flying by reading books. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I encourage people to read books because it, like, it's good for your imagination. It's good to learn about the world that we live in. But I learned about pilots, and I decided that's what I want to do, is be a pilot. And then I started reading about the astronauts. And I, I knew that to be an astronaut, the best way to do that is to go through the flying route. Right. So I decided to join the military. I joined the Air Force at a time when women were first taken into the flying world. And so that was my career. I wrote a book about it, and that book was eventually made into the documentary. You are a, a pioneer. Um, and we find ourselves, I guess, would you say on the verge of a new generation of space exploration, uh, there are calls for the US to go back to the moon, as you point out, very, very soon. Um, and we've just found out as well that this new program, this Artemis program, which will, right. will um, expand our exploration in space, is now basically open for tender. So we have commercial agencies, um, SpaceX and Blue Origin, competing for that prize to, to work with NASA. Is, is that a good thing to have that competition, do you think? Yeah, you know, I, it's definitely a good thing. Um, the model today, nowadays is a little bit different. So back in the early days, NASA would own and operate the spacecraft. Mm -hmm. Well, today we have this commercial model where in the case of SpaceX and now Blue Origin, they own and operate their equipment and NASA is a customer. So SpaceX was building our lunar lander. Just two days ago, the NASA administrator, Sean Duffy, decided asked to bring another company into that competition mm -hmm. for the first moon landing. And so Blue Origin, another one of our space companies, is probably one of the leading companies as far as the development of their lander. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we're now going to see some competition for who is going to land, which company is going to land the first spacecraft on the moon. The astronaut crew has not been selected yet, right. but that will be, a, I think, a very exciting time when we finally get, and, and we do want to get on the moon as soon as possible because we believe that we're in a space race with China because China, which is not cooperating with the U.S., and so we are not cooperating mm. with them in the space program right now, who is going to get to the moon next? Mm. Will it be China or will it be the United States and the international partners? We'll see how that goes. We'll see. The race is very much on Island Collins. We've got to leave it there because we've run out of time, but thank you so much. Really good to talk to you. I could talk to you all day. Where can we see the documentary? Yeah, the documentary is Space Woman, and it's being shown six times in and around London. And we've also shown it in the United States. It's a story of my life. It's a story of what it's like to be an astronaut and the human side with our families and how they cope with the dangers of spaceflight.